Hello, I'm Grayson Ottaway. Welcome back. This is Marvelous Videos. Death Ranger Origin Explored. Today, it's time for some Ranger power. The Death Ranger, who just made their appearance as one of the ugliest Rangers in the cosmos, has had their origins disclosed by the Power Rangers. The six legendary Omega Rangers use their elemental powers to shield people from the bad forces thousands of years ago when they guarded the universe from evil. But all changed when a crucial team member fell prey to the worst enemy of the Rangers' death-defying abilities. In Boom Studios, Power Rangers Unlimited, the Death Ranger No. 1, during a confrontation with a tremendously strong cosmic entity, an Omega Ranger named Spark is slain, and as a result, they are reincarnated as the Death Ranger with new abilities. We will explore this and much more in today's episode. So let's get ready for some morphin' time. Before we go into our explanation, a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to this channel. A small click for you, but for us, it means so much. Thank you. Let's get going. Death Ranger Tragic Origin Explored The primary foe in Power Rangers Unlimited, the Death Ranger, is Spark. Prior to turning against them and becoming the Death Ranger, they were the first Gold Ranger of the Amiga Rangers. Later, they temporarily took control of Zane, who transformed into the Silver Space Ranger, Jason Lee Scott, who transformed into the Red Omega Ranger, and Yale of Saad, who transformed into the Blue Amiga Ranger. This origin story was revealed in Power Rangers Unlimited The Death Ranger, a one-shot issue published by Boom Studios. In this issue, the authors take readers back thousands of years to a time when the original Omega Rangers were still defending the universe from terrifying threats like the enormous sister supernova in Power Rangers Unlimited, the Death Ranger No. 1. The Red Omega, the bold and tenacious leader, led the heroes in their fight and capture of the beast. However, not before they made themselves a target for the sister following in line. The Blue Omega Ranger, Haza, was slain in their subsequent combat before she had an opportunity to change. As sad as her destiny was, a far more ominous turn of events occurred when Spark, the Gold Omega Ranger, was utterly unable to grasp the idea, much less accept it. Although the species of Spark are distinctive in many ways, legacy and living journeys stand out the most. According to Spark, the legacy was the collective awareness of all his people who had finished their individual living journeys. Although it is possible to view this as a form of afterlife, this is in no way representative of how Spark and their species perceived it. They believed that the sole distinction between the living journey and the legacy was one of state, not mortality. Because of this, it was much harder for the Gold Omega Ranger to accept the thought that death was ever truly final. As a result, they took all reasonable measures to prevent Hazar's death. Spark was able to revive Hazar with the aid of Dark Spectre and long hours of study and investigation. Naturally, the remainder of the Amigas found this discovery repulsive and intolerable, and the ensuing conflict would be the final one their gold counterpart would witness for eons. Hazar was able to change the course of the conflict despite Spark's legions of dead minions and their grasp on her, before she once more met her end. The remaining Omega Rangers were compelled to jail one of their own because Spark was once more unwilling to accept Hazar's death. After being imprisoned for millennia, Spark developed into a cold, cunning, wicked being who was still committed to using the grid to control death 
and put an end to it. It is even more upsetting if it is tragic that so much destruction resulted from a cultural or semantic mistake because nothing could lessen it. Contrary to what many people believed, Spark did not become a Death Ranger because of any blatantly malevolent influences. The Death Ranger openly promotes their hatred for Dark Spectre, but they are blind to the brutality of their campaign against the forces of evil. Beyond their inherent incapacity to understand or accept death as a finality, Spark's control over people who have died simply serves to further their perverted sense of righteousness. More particularly, that death is a restriction people let themselves put on. The Death Ranger thinks that by defeating death, they are giving the universe the most incredible gift, one that everyone else won't fully understand until after. One of the most notable comic books involving Death Ranger was Power Rangers issue number 22. Here we see that the Death Ranger is unlike anything the Omega Rangers have ever encountered. Progressively more terrifying new foes have marked their whole career. In addition to being an old member of the same heritage that they have adopted in the present, their most recent adversary is also on a mission to recover it and recreate it in their own hideous image. Even worse, one of the Omegas had been pieced back together by the Death Ranger into a menace that can't be dealt with and is already disintegrating, making the situation worse. Jason had no idea that his initial encounter with Andros would lead him to a world filled with unimaginable horrors. The freshly revived Zane, as shown in the comic book, is nothing more than a vehicle for the Omega's evil rival. Jason does his hardest to convince Andros to change his mind as the situation becomes more critical. Unfortunately, a sword through Jason's heart ends his pleading, but it is far from the end of this tale. Jason appears to be among the strongest rangers of all time, or at the very least, one more suited to the requirements of the Death Ranger. Jason dies and, like Zane, is engulfed by the Death Ranger, becoming the most recent in a long series of vessels for the long-forgotten former Gold Omega. The switch would appear to confirm that Jason is the more powerful of the two illustrious rangers, despite Zane's apparent advantages, assuming the Death Ranger was only looking for a more powerful host. This may also indicate that Jason is the Red Omega, Zane is the Silver Space Ranger, and Jason's position is more important. Whatever the details, the Death Ranger has still increased their weaponry in the worst way imaginable, principally for reasons that even they themselves are not yet aware of. The Death Ranger has previously shown that it partially absorbs the memories and experiences of its hosts. They've also demonstrated that they are fully aware of the Omega's adventures, suggesting that their vision is much broader than any safe haven jail the Rangers could ever design. The Death Ranger has successfully engaged the galaxy's most potent hero thanks to Jason's abilities and expertise. The other Amigas have no margin for mistake given this and the tools currently at their disposal, especially given that they will be making a concerted effort to hold back in the first place. Zack and Trini are unaware that Zane, Jason and everyone else in the Death Ranger's power have passed away, even though the Death Ranger made that fact quite plain. Although Jason may be the Death Ranger's most incredible host to date, there is still a vast universe of Rangers powered by chaos energy for them to explore. They will thus undoubtedly be doing their hardest to prevent inflicting any severe harm to their comrade, who has been converted into a monster creature, which only increases the likelihood that they will be the Death Ranger's following targets. This also implies that everyone else who blocks the Death Ranger would think that they are the only Amigas left alive. Jason will wind up being the least of their concerns if the Amigas can't halt their new adversary right now. 
the Death Ranger has been partially revived in the present by Red Space Ranger Andros in the continuing Power Rangers comic by long-standing series creator Ryan Parrott and illustrator Marco Renner. In a horrifying demonstration of their gruesome control over the dead, the Death Ranger has so far turned Jason of the Amigas and the former Silver Space Ranger Zane into unliving vessels. The Death Ranger will officially debut in modern times in the forthcoming Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 100, which also serves as Parrot's last issue. What makes the Death Ranger so deadly? The entire species of Spark possesses a connected consciousness with the dead, which means that individuals who have passed from this world linger on in the minds of those who have not yet left it. Death Ranger is unbelievably powerful. They are capable of raising the dead into a controlled zombie army. As we see in the comics, Spark possesses Hazar's body and mind controls her. Spark may take over the host bodies of living things and transform them into twisted zombie versions of themselves using the corrupted Gold Omega Morpher. They can also develop a collective awareness of themselves to manage several hosts. Spark is also omniscient through their warped link to the Morphin Grid. Spark can know everything about someone who is connected to it, including past and future occurrences. Spark's weapon of choice is his sidearms, which he always carries with him and shoots Omega Blasts. Fun fact, according to author Paul Allor, the Spark species is genderless and, as a result, utilizes the pronouns they, them. Marvelous Verdict The sixth Rangers and the Power Rangers really enjoy becoming bad. It's virtually a defining characteristic for sixth Rangers to begin in opposition to the teams they eventually join as seen by Tommy Oliver's initial storyline in Green with Evil and later characters like the Titanium Ranger of Lightspeed Rescue or the Lunar Ranger of Wild Force. But they'll all inevitably change for the better, evolving from adamant adversaries into genuine comrades. It's a lovely pattern that makes perfect sense for children's enjoyment. Redemption is frequently plain to see. Characters are allowed to toy with evil before joining the leading group of heroes. It spares authors the burden of explaining why a likeable adversary may regard themselves as the hero. However, although still attractive to children, Power Rangers comics are written with a broader audience in mind. As a result, they are more inclined to utilize rangers who deviate from the righteous path in their darker tales. Another installment in this series, the Death Ranger pushes the boundaries and paves the way for future Omega Ranger villainy. They are compelling and are corrupted at the moment, but we know they can be good. So there's one thing left for us to do. Wait for the next comic to come out. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you can be updated every time we upload a new video. And please smash the like button if you've enjoyed watching this video. Also comment if you have any other characters to explore on your radar. We will see you in the next video.